All right, so for final exam, problem number one uh, will be a projectile problem, right? A projectile is something that is going through the air without any uh, thrust, without any engine, with just passively uh, flying through the air. <clears throat> Um, and so, I mean, you're going to know problem number one, but you're going to see, you know, you're going to think about, oh, this, that, that's the path. That, that's a projectile. Um, I can use my projectile equations. For projectiles, what's the main thing? The acceleration in X is zero. The acceleration in Y is the acceleration due to gravity down. Uh, so let's look at this one. A uh, girl always throws the pool toys at an angle 30 degrees from horizontal at point A, as shown in the figure. Determine the range of the velocities the girl can throw the toys so they will land in the pool. So let me find the minimum velocity so that it will go from A to B. Let me find the maximum velocity that it will go from A to C. Um, <clears throat> and then get those, uh, solve for those velocities. So, uh, remember, uh, the way I like to do this, uh, separate x from y because my x velocity uh, is a constant velocity. There's no acceleration in x is zero. For my y, the acceleration in y is down, uh, acceleration due to gravity. Whether you, th whether you think of acceleration as zero, acceleration of 9.81, um, it's constant acceleration. So I can use any of my three constant acceleration equations. Uh, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm using this third one, final position equals initial position plus vit plus one half a t squared sf equals si plus vit plus one half a t squared uh what is the um one or two times that i'm not going to use that equation i'm not going to use that equation if i want to find the very very maximum height right here that it goes with this one i would say my vy at maximum height is zero, my VY final. So maybe I'd use one of the other ones and set the, the Y, only the Y velocity final, to be zero at the maximum height. Um, we're not doing that right now. Uh, but also, and maybe I'll talk about this, uh, if I want to find the velocity or the speed right at the end, I would need to use another of those equations because this is the equation, this is the constant acceleration equation that doesn't have final velocity in that equation, right? Look back at those three equations. The other two have VF. This one doesn't have VF, um, but many times I need to use this because that's that's the equation that my unknowns, uh, you know, that I have enough unknowns, probably two equations, uh, probably two unknowns. So uh, <clears throat> remember to separate X from Y. You're only thinking about the X position, the X initial position, the X velocity, the X acceleration. Uh, you know, when we go to the Y, we're thinking about the Y position, Y velocity, Y acceleration, all those. Um, all right. Uh, I like to kind of remind myself, and for the final exam, you have a little bit more time <clears throat> for the final exam. So just, just remind yourself, uh, okay, I'm going from A to B. I'm trying to find the minimum initial velocity from A to B. All right, so from A to B, in the X direction, only the X direction, I end at a position of 2.5. I start, we'll call this zero, right? Start at zero, end at 2.5. Um, VA is what I'm trying to find. The X position is cosine 30. Don't forget that T. That is a common mistake. I was about to forget that T. Don't forget that T right there. VA cosine 30. T, uh, and acceleration in X is zero. All right, so, you know, I, I could do as much as I can, maybe just kind of, but there's two unknowns in that equation, 2.5 over cosine 30. Um, the T is in the denominator right here. Um, I, I, I just, sometimes I like to get that as a value. Blah, blah, blah over T is VA. Now, I've done as much as I can. I have one equation, uh, two unknowns, VA and T. I don't know either of those. So let me jump to my Y equation. So let's only think about Y position, Y velocity, Y acceleration. Uh, with this one, um, you know, I, I, nine times out of ten, I want my Y to be up. So make sure the position is up positive. The velocity is up. The um, acceleration is up positive. Uh, so... Um, you can set your ground to be wherever you want to. Uh, so do I want to set my zero to be at the ground? I could set my zero to be at here. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to set zero to be at the ground. So that would mean that I end. Now let, let's look at that. In order for it to barely make it into that, um, you know, pool, um, I just need to make sure it gets to that point right there. So I'm going to say that it, for my case, to, to ensure it gets there, I just need to make sure it ends at point B. Point B is 0.25 meters above, and I started at 1. So I think I'm going to, to um, set my ground to be the ground, set my zero level to be the ground. Uh, and so I would say I end at 0.25, I started at 1. Here's another option here. I'll do this in pink. What if I set this to be my zero point at the ground? Then I would say that I started at zero. I ended at what? Negative 0.75. And you see that 1 and 0.25 is the same thing as zero and negative 0.75. In fact, that's one of the first things I'm going to do is, is take that 1 over there. So you can set your ground to be wherever you want to. Just be consistent and be consistent with your direction. Whatever direction you make positive for these, make sure you're agreeing with the direction for the velocity and the acceleration. All right, let me erase a lot of this right here. Okay, so let me continue. V initial. What is V initial? Only the Y. This is the Y. This is the Y. This is the Y. Only the Y V initial. I, d I don't know V initial, uh, but I'm going to put V A sine 30 T. Uh, now, positive or negative? Positive because it's pointed up. Now, be careful. I've done some where the if, if it is pointed down initially, then that V initial would be negative V A, you know, um, it's a big, um, if I've ever given problems like that, lots of students would not uh, get that. So be careful, you know, maybe your velocity is down, uh, but stick with one direction positive and keep that positive throughout. All right, so here when I'm going to do one half, now this acceleration I know is down 9.81 so negative 9.81 t squared right there all right so we're only think about the y direction be very careful about okay where am i going where am i ending um and what am i what am i what is my direction my direction is positive up so i would have a negative 9.81 this is in si units uh, be careful. If this was feet, then this would be negative 32.2. Okay, so now I, uh, this equation also has two unknowns, so I need to substitute. Take this that VA, plug it in right there. Uh, I'll leave the math for y'all to do. Uh, I've got T.669 seconds. You can plug that back in up here. VA 4.32 meters per second. That would be the minimum velocity that would get it from A to B. Now let me find the maximum velocity that would get it from A to C. Maximum velocity. Same equation. SF equals S. Only looking at X. SF equals SI plus VIT plus one half A T squared. Uh, SF equals SI plus VIT plus one half A t squared. Now I'm going from a to c, so I would be going from 0 to 4. 0 to 4. All right. Follow along here. Do this with me. va cosine 30 t. Now do not plug in this va right here. You know, this is a new va that I'm trying to find. That acceleration is 0. So here va 4 over cosine 30 T. Uh, and here, let's look at the y direction. I'm going to say it starts at 1, ends at 0.25. Right, so ends at 0.25, starts at 1. VA cosine 30 T, 1 half negative 9.81 T squared. Plug this in right here. Get T is 0 0.790. Plug that back in up there. Get this on, on one page. VA 5.85 meters per second. 
So that would be the minimum. This is how I like for you to do it. Uh, so between 4.32 and 5.85 meters per second. That's the range of values of VA that would ensure that this rubber ducky makes it just barely into the lip of the top of that pool right there.